Hi, I'm Forrest Gray, and this is BMI's Know Them Now video series. When I was 14, I took this American cinema class at my high school, and it was kind of my first proper introduction to the classics. Uh, the course was taught by this kind of renaissance man of a teacher. His name was Kimball Humiston. And one day we watched this film, uh, and then there were none. And after the film finishes, uh, Mr. Humiston goes up to the whiteboard, and by ear he writes out, scribbles out this uh, ten note theme that plays in the overture. And he points out that as each of the ten characters who are marooned on this island start dying off one by one, the theme as it plays in the film loses a note. And it, it really was this seminal moment for me and fostered this deep, long-lasting appreciation for film music and the art of film music. And I think for me that, that had to have been the point where I seriously started considering it as a career. So I really don't have a secret for avoiding writer's block. Um, I do experience it often, uh, but I definitely have a method for dealing with it. And for me, that just means getting as far away from the music as possible. Starting with the procrastination, make coffee, play with my dog Maisel, take her for a run, come home, make more coffee. And then when I decide to get back to work, I won't start with the piece that's frustrating me. I'll sit down and just play through a piece of music that I enjoy playing. And if I do all these things in no particular order, as long as I end with playing a piece that brings me inspiration or joy, I find that it successfully removes that block and puts me back in the right headspace. The best part about writing music is when I get that seedling of an idea. Then, if you're lucky, um, there comes this point or the tension between what you wanted it to be and what it's asking to be ceases and it starts to take form. You reach this critical moment where something that was nothing, maybe even hours before, is suddenly something. And that's the best part about writing music. Overcoming that struggle, building that trust with the piece, and letting it tell you what it wants to be. I'm sure I do what most people do, which is I grab my iPhone, and I open voice memos, and I sing in this like really crude representation of what I'm trying to get across. What I generally end up with is uh, like a hundred nondescript files, new recording one, two, three, four, etc. And you just have to sift through and try and discern the intention. And you swear the intention came across when you sang it in, but oftentimes it doesn't. Save for that one out of 10 or 15 or so, that's actually kind of good and developed enough where you can make something of it. So when I was just born, um, my parents weren't technically together, which is a story for another time. And my mom was living in this loft in Tribeca in New York with this experimental uh, performance group. And that group would later go on to become the Blue Man Group. So when I was really young, I was exposed to that world in this loft that was kind of this incubator for this really interesting world of performance and experimentation. I always think that on some level it imparted or inculcated an early love of music. You know, all these years later, drums were my first instrument, so it must have had something to do with my, my early love of music. So I would say the one album that had the single most profound effect on me growing up was Arcade Fire's Funeral. And at the time, I'm, I'm playing in this rock band, so I would have been like 13, 14, and I have no background in classical music. And Arcade Fire, this, or this album in particular, is the first time I, I hear this music that really successfully combines these pop sensibilities with more, like more of an orchestral bent. So when I started listening to this, I started trying to create my own uh, kind of Arcade Fire sound alike. So I would, um, I'd sit in my room with this like keyboard and a snare drum and my guitar and create these kind of quasi-orchestral arrangements. But a couple years later, so at the time when I was 16, this Steven Soderbergh uh, reached out and he was making this documentary on, on my dad, Spalding Gray, and the documentary was kind of chronicling my dad's life and career. And Steven Soderbergh asked if I would write this piece for the end credits. And so I kind of did my best attempt at an Arcade Fire song and I called it Sunset, and I recorded it in the orchestra room in my high school, and I recorded it directly into the built-in Mac of, uh, the built-in microphone of my, my Mac 
uh, which I know sounds terrible, the end result was this kind of really low-grade, um, charmingly naive uh, attempt at a, an arcade fire song, and it, and it kind of worked in this weird way. The laptop mic. <laughs>